friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time and I'm sitting here on the front steps of my deck and I'm going to give you the latest garden update. Today I'm going to focus mostly on my herb garden beds but I'll go ahead and show you a few new things that we did out here and that we're doing out here in the front garden as well as the back garden areas. And I apologize if it's a little noisy in the background. Um, I never can find a perfect day. If it's nice then the neighbors are out doing work. I got a neighbor across the street and on the corner that does welding and stuff. Anyway so here's my uh gooseberry I have seen where is it okay there we go see the little berries I'm getting lots of those little gooseberries this year so yay maybe I'll get actually get more than just one gooseberry off of this year because those those are the red ones those ones are so tasty they're like a yummy sweet tart but uh, anyway, so my strawberries are starting to explode all over the place. So I've got a bunch here. It's gonna be long before I start getting berries because I believe these are all June bearing strawberries. And then you can see my herbs come along. I've actually been harvesting so much peppermint and I just, I don't mind. I actually planted it here because I intentionally wanted it to take over this area. And that was before we decided to expand out that way. So I have to keep pulling it back from this area over here. So between those sticks over there, I actually planted some beets. I got two different types of beets planted there. I gotta get a shot of this. This is my quince tree busting out in, in blooms. I don't remember the blooms on them. The blossoms being pink last year. I'm sure they were white. But I think I'll get a lot more quince off this this year. And as you can see back there, uh, there's the chickens. I've limited their front, <laughs> their front garden roaming area to back there so we took the excess fencing that we had rolled up over there after we closed in this whole area and stretched it and it was just enough to stretch all the way across to over there so uh but they don't mind they actually like hanging out under those shrubs as you can see they hung out there most of the day yesterday and i pulled back some of that stinging nettle that's my stinging nettle i cut so much off of it yesterday and look how huge it still is i cut i pulled a bunch up to give them a little more space back in there so they love hanging out there. Rubes are, rhubarbs are going crazy, but I had to get them out of this area, even with the pots over the potatoes, because they were they decided they liked the taste of the potato leaves and were starting to uh, tear them up. I've got some zucchini planted. There's one there and one there. Those are two that I started from seed indoors in the greenhouse. And then right in this area, I did go ahead and plant some seed that I saved from the zucchini I grew last year. And then here I planted some dragon tongue beans. I'll probably talk about those more later. So yeah, look at my herbs, oregano, uh, my sage. Look how pretty it's starting to look. And then uh, that, <laughs> that poor little lemon bomb doesn't look very happy, but that's because I, I cut a bunch off of it the other day. Okay, let's go over to the herb beds. So there I've got a golden oregano, which is one of my very favorites. And um, the darker color you see is simply dandelion growing in there and I don't care. I, I most of the time let dandelion grow where it wants to because especially if it's in the garden areas because it's good for the other plants and so I don't mind. So thyme, I just transplanted an echinacea I grew from seed from last year. I want to get some more echinacea growing out here. Some more thyme. This, uh, this one and the one over there are the foxley thyme. That's my current favorite. I've got some uh, forget-me-nots that just have come in on their own, and I don't mind. I love forget-me-nots. This is my yarrow. I've actually been cutting a bunch off and drying it, but I'm going to go ahead and let uh, some of it flower. I just I want to get as many leaves off of it as I can before it starts flowering, though, because then the leaves get smaller, like any herb does. I've got an edible lily there. This is a calendula that, that never died back from last year, as is... This one right back hidden back in here so i'll probably be putting some more calendula in here this is a common time I, I love it it's still great but my favorite is that foxley it has bigger leaves just a better taste all around i did plant let's see there's another echinacea there some more this is my second favorite time right here this one i keep forgetting the name of it. i keep wanting to call it highland cream but i can't now i can't remember the name of it it's not highland cream but it's really good just a nice mild flavor. Another foxly thyme with clover growing amongst it. My valerian, I've been cutting some leaves off of here and still it's just exploding. So, uh, and I got some more I wanna talk about with the valerian. Now this thing can get up to eight feet tall. So I, I'll put a little video clip here if you're new. 
of it last year before it got mowed down by a chunk of wood that came off the roof when they were replacing it but uh, it got oh, over eight feet tall so my current one of my currants it's also getting berries you can see those right there and I have a total of four currants. This current here was given to me by a neighbor. It was just a little root stock was all it was. And I went ahead and took it, even though I already had three. I figured, why not? And this was the only open space I had for it. So I stuck it there because I just dug up some marshmallow root out of there. Uh, catnip here is doing good. I usually just let garlic, I just put it wherever and let it grow. And usually just harvest the greens. Sometimes I'll dig it up. This one is an elephant garlic that I just transplanted from last year and I'll talk about more about that in a minute. Fever few, fever few back in here. That right there is a goji berry that came back. I thought I got rid of all the goji berries or that they had all died. And so I gave up on them and one decided last year, it decided to start growing again. And now it's looking pretty healthy. So we'll see, maybe it'll do better for us this year. The sage on this side of the house isn't doing quite as good as the one out front. They've been here for years. But I'm thinking that what I need to do is hack them way back. So there's one of my elderberries. I still need to finish doing a lot of grass cleanup out of here. I'm working on it. That's what I'm doing today. So you can see a lot of grass growing in here. And that's after me thinning a bunch of it out. That is lavender. This, that's my lemon balm. It started to spread out this way. I think it came out this way farther. But we put a bunch of ashes from the wood. The, the wood stove around there and I think it kind of smothered some of it but that's okay because it's been spreading across here through the oregano and that's some more lavender there and the mojito mint so in little places here and there you can find some of the lemon balm and I'm fine with that so I have a total out front here of four lavenders the oldest one obviously being that huge one down there and then more uh, woolly lambs here another elderberry so i have a total of three elderberries okay and then that right there is a rosemary my oldest rosemary plant which is pretty cool because it's the first time i've seen it get flowers and i that i had to it took me years to figure out the best place in rain country remember people 120 to 160 inches of rain annually where rosemary would grow because if you know it does not like wet feet it does not like a lot of water that's a newer rosemary there, but finding, planting it up right up next to the house was the best place for it. The dirt here, I have it to slope slightly, so that would lift it up a little higher, so any any water that gets up there will drain down this way. And then um, also the eaves from above will help protect it from getting too much rain in the first place. So yeah, these are just still kind of uh, snapping back from winter, but they're doing, they've done so much better having them back here. And then I do have one in the other bed that I forgot to point out. Oh, and then that was another, another garlic I transplanted. I'm getting to that in just a minute. This sage, I'm already in the process of hacking it way back because I think I've just let it get too out of control. It will fill in and get bushier, but for one, I don't like it out this far. It's coming clear out over here into my other catnip and this fever few here and so here's a bunch i broke off so far so i'm just gonna i'm gonna cut it way back and prune out some more of those branches and then see if i can get this to bush out it's just way too big anyway and i have way more sage than i can use and you can see it going back over there too this is horseradish and then another uh, fever few so this this garlic here is basically the mother of the other two that I transplanted. So whenever you leave a garlic, garlic or onions in the ground, they will multiply and usually they multiply in threes. So one garlic plant will then create two new plants. So you'll end up with three growing up in the same area. So that's what I dig as I did as I dug the other two up and then just spread them out that way, you know, crossed over there. So I'm using those garlic greens. I love the taste of them, been dehydrating them up. Still haven't decided if I'm gonna powder them or just flake them, but I'll definitely be using them for seasoning. Okay, let's go ahead and head out back. Out here are the currants. So it's gonna, they should get tons of berries. Just like on the ones out front, I see some little green berries coming on there. So it should be pretty full. I got quite a few berries off of them last year. So I have four total, one on each side of the entryway into the main garden bed. And chickens are no longer allowed in here because I have planted several rows of corn, sweet corn, right out there. 
I have uh, here I have I still had some a lot of seed potatoes left from last year so I planted another row of potatoes here and then between each of those I planted some of those dragon tongue bush beans back there and then in front I put some more beets and this area here I still not positive what I'm going to do with all of it yet I have several ideas it's just kind of waiting to see how some of my other plants are going to go and then here I've got a couple more potato plants I've got nasturtiums planted I've got calendula planted and then the echinacea some more catnip and some red lettuce you might be able to see that that I transplanted over here and see my marshmallow plants are doing good that's another one of my valerians beans planted all along between those two panels since it's still been pretty cold at night I'm just gonna leave those there for now and uh, keep them just probably for another week or two because the beans seem to be very happy with that and this is another lavender I'll be planting my uh, tomatillo seedlings in here soon. And the other area I've blocked the chickens off from is the squash pea potato patch. This is more potatoes growing here. And some were trying to come back from last year and the chickens were kind of keeping them down, but uh, now they should do okay. And then my peas, look how good they're doing. They'll be able to start climbing. I've already kind of taken some of them and kind of hooked them onto the cattle panel there so they'll climb up there and yeah so chicken coop right there and then here on this side is where I'll be putting my pumpkin and my butternut and then that pippin acorn which I finally finally found the seed to I planned on planting it this year but I couldn't figure out what happened to my seed and it had fallen behind the the shelf where I store all my seed so I was glad to finally find that these three pots here even though I have volunteer tomatillos coming up Last year I tried depending just on those. Uh, they, they do come up really good. They self-seed great. But they because of our cooler climate, they just never got as much fruit as they normally would get in time for me to put up a lot and make a lot make some salsa verde, which was fine because I had a lot of salsa verde from the previous years. But so this year I did the same thing here as I did with my tomatoes. I saved slices, I stuck them in there, covered them with dirt and just watered them good and put them here in the greenhouse window and they're doing good so um, eventually I'll be getting these planted out there but here's the other thing I wanted to show you that I'm pretty excited about this is valerian from my own seed this is the best germination rate I have ever ever got from valerian seed and the trick to it is you got and next year I do plan on selling some valerian seed on my store but I don't usually like selling the seed until I know I can get it to do good so the trick is when you get valerian you got to take a really fine sandpaper put the valerian seed in the palm of your hand and lightly sand it and I don't know why but that does something to it and it makes it germinate so much better all right well that's it for this week's garden update and by the way behind me you'll see some more strawberries in pots and our plum tree so one of our plum trees <laughs> this is the one that's going to get fruit the one that's still in a pot that we still got to move we're thinking about putting it out at the other piece of property and then the one that we moved to the front yard doesn't have any fruit on it this year so strange even though it's been in there it's on its second year out there be watching next week for more garden updates to come and i hope you find these helpful and educational and by the way get your hands in the dirt if that dirt is good for you there's enzymes in that dirt that release the endorphins and that's why uh, gardening makes you happy. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless. Mm -hmm.